Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric, and I thought today we'd go on generator safety, especially with everything that's going on in Florida, North Carolina, Alabama. You know, you guys are having it rough. My heart, my prayers go out to you guys. Stay safe, you know. guys a lot of you are running these generators so I think it's a good time to talk about safety right so the first thing I would say when it comes to running a generator is make sure that you have proper ventilation that means you know you don't want it running in an enclosed area you know carbon monoxide so what I recommend is that you face the generator exhaust system to the outside you can still leave it in the building we just have it so the exhaust is going out the door. And that way you don't run into an issue of carbon monoxide. You also want to keep it dry. You got electrical cords coming out of it. And if it's raining on top of your generator, you're looking at possible shorts, fires, everything else. So keep it dry, even if it's just putting a, a tarp over this. I know I don't like to recommend that because it causes the engine to get warmer from the heat coming off from it but you need to keep this unit dry while it's running so that it's not having electrical sparks and everything else and proper fuel storage when it comes to refueling this let it cool down because what can happen is you can spill some and it can come down onto the exhaust which is here and next thing you know you've got a big fire and we don't want that, right? And that goes for your fuel, your gas cans that you've got to refill this with. Keep them away from the generator, you know, at a safe distance so that it can't catch fire to those as well. So when it comes time to refuel, shut it down, let it cool, put some fuel in it, and then start it back up. The other thing is, is you don't want to overload the generator. You need to know how many watts you need to run certain things in your house, right? And then the more stuff you want on, the bigger the generator's got to be. And if you're running an 8500 with a $10,000, 10,000 peak watt, you know, you can pretty much run most households. My household has gas stove, gas uh, propane furnace. So the only thing that's the hot water heaters, propane, so I don't need a lot to run my house on a generator, but I have a, uh, you have the water pump that's in the well, the submergible, you have the refrigerator, freezers, lights, you know, the more stuff you have on, the bigger the generator you need. So you don't want to overload it because it'll keep tripping itself off. And when it comes to turning the generator on what I recommend is you turn everything off in your breaker box in your home and then you bring them on one at a time to see what load you have on that generator you can hear the generator if it's a labor and that big thing when it comes to starting this up you need to make sure you're not connected to the grid I know a lot of you guys, the, the power lines are all down and there's no, but you need to make sure that there is nothing back feeding to that line that could hurt somebody else or kill somebody. And it could be a lineman down there trying to help you get power back on. And if your generator is back feeding to him, you could kill him on that line. So you want to make sure that there is no way that the power can feed back to the line. And in my case, I have a breaker on the pole, right? that I can throw the main breaker and then the household I can keep it with the generator only defeating the household all right so make sure you're not connected back to the grid you need to make sure that you're off grid and you're not having back feeding power through the power lines if you're going to use extension cords 
make sure they're heavy enough. You know, that they're rated heavy enough for what wattage you're asking to do for. And for a lot of you guys, you know, if you're in Florida, North Carolina, you're, you're probably running extension cords. So you want to make sure the extension cords that you're running are heavy enough to have that much power going through them. Because they will get hot. You could feel them. They, they will get hot and melt. So proper extension cords for what your needs are. And then lastly is taking care of the unit. What do we mean by taking care of the unit? These weren't made for continuous run. The homeowner series, it's made for here or there, you know, not a lot of hours. And most of them recommend 10 to 15 hours change oil. I recommend if you're on a continuous run and you're, you're out in those states, you know, that have been affected with the hurricane, every three days. Shut her down, drain the oil, put fresh oil in it, and then fire it back up. That way, you know, you're keeping it at tip-top condition, and it will last longer. So hopefully that kind of helps you guys out, you know, with safety-wise, because we don't want anybody to get hurt. If you don't know what you're doing, talk to somebody that does and how to get set up. And you don't want to go out and start that generator when you need it. You need to have a plan in place or you're periodically checking it to make sure everything is working right, you know, before you actually need it. Because if not, then you're going to be calling me like a hundred other people wanting to know if I can get your generator running. And it may be days before I can get to it. So on that note, you guys have a great day. Think safe. We, want, we, we don't want anybody getting hurt or killed. Thanks.